right, welcome back to another Victoria Events with Caleb Shaw. It is Monday, July 10th. Let's jump right into it. We got a full show, as always. A lot of cool people here, so we want to get right into it. Ladies, thank you so much for joining. For those that don't know you, please introduce yourselves and let them know who you're here with. Sure, my name is Ashley Rodriguez. I'm with Pam Health Rehab Hospital here in Victoria. I'm the Director of Rehab Services. Outstanding. And you, young lady? I'm Donna Timmons, and I'm the HR Director for PM Rehabilitation. Outstanding. Well, I always ask this. if Let's say I moved to town today. Mm -hmm. I don't know what PAM is. I don't know anything about it. Why is it important to Victoria, and why are we blessed to have it here? Yeah, so our um, PAM Health Market here in Victoria is actually pretty widespread. We provide a lot of services. Um, we have LTAC, or long-term acute hospitals, inpatient rehab hospitals, as well as outpatient therapy, wound care, and infusion. Um, today we're representing the rehab hospital, which a lot of people don't realize we have in our own backyard. Um, inpatient rehab is a specialty hospital that has around-the-clock nurses, physicians that round, you get three hours of therapy a day, and we serve patients that are coming back from injury or illness, that, um, and we're trying to get them back home and as independent as possible. So yes, it's a great ma'am. Is that the hyperbaric chamber as well? It's next door. Next door. Okay. Because yes. we did, way back in the day, we did yes. an episode on Pam, and we learned a lot, and we were completely blown away by the level of care and the, mm -hmm. the level of uh, healthcare personnel that y'all had over yeah. there as well. It was top notch. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if we have a patient that's inpatient that needs the hyperbaric, they can actually do that while they're inpatient as well. Um, but most of our hyperbaric patients for wound care are outpatient. Outstanding. Well, good to know. And you guys have something big coming up that I'm, anytime we can find something to help the community get back to work or find employment, especially right here in our local economy, we want to do so. And you guys are helping, once again, to lead the way on that. So what is it you guys have coming up here this week? So we have a job fair coming up on July 13th. Thursday. Thursday. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So we're looking for RNs, LVNs, occupational therapists, physical therapists. Um, did I leave out any therapists? Um, occupational therapy assistants. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Yes. There, you, there go. you go. As well. And so what is this, you know, what can I expect if I've never been to a job fair before or maybe I'm slightly intimidated and I don't really know what to expect? Can you kind of walk me through, you know, what I need to do to be prepared and Absolutely. what do I expect when I get there? So um, we've actually got it a little bit more organized than that. So you can actually go to Indeed to sign up for a slot for scheduling. Okay. Uh, we will take walk-ins. So the address um, will be posted, I think, on y'all's website, along with a QR code that they can scan to link them directly to the part where they can schedule a, an, an appointment. Maybe I got you. And visit. can they find that if they happen to go to you all's Facebook page and, and it's on yes, there as yes, well? And yes. so, okay, good, good. Yes. And so that's Indeed, I-N-D-E-E-D. -E -E that's yes. what will help schedule them. Okay, good. And uh, um, again, this is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Should I be intimidated? Should I be nervous? <laughs> well, I get no. to talk to, are there any interviews on site or is it more of just a general meet and greet? Or? No, we're interviewing on site and Ashley and I are definitely participating in the interview process. We'll also yeah. have the rest of our leadership and management team that will be taking interviews as well. Outstanding. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. If I was entry level, let's just say I just graduated and, and those career fields interest me, but mm -hmm. I'm not there yet. I don't have those certifications. I haven't started that, yeah. but... Maybe this is a dream for me, or I want to be an LVN or one of those ends that y'all mentioned. I don't, I can't, I can't repeat them all that. Yeah. There's was, was a lot of good yes. things there. What could somebody, you know, again, I'm not qualified for those yet, but I, I want to be, or I want to get some general yeah. direction or encouragement from you guys. Well, can that, I still swing by? Yes, and honestly, that is something we really take pride in um, with PAM Health is we want to cultivate professionals in our community. So we're constantly taking in um, students, future students that are needing observation hours for the therapies, for nursing. They get to do ride-alongs with the staff um, so that they can see what the day-to-day -day is like, see if it's something they're interested in, but also get those requirements for the programs before they apply to um, the physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, nursing programs. So we really want to cultivate um, So what, you, what you're telling me then, sorry to over talk you, what you're telling me then is if somebody shows a little bit of drive, a little bit of initiative, a little bit of motivation. Mm -hmm. And while they may not be directly qualified for one of the big mm -hmm. positions right now, they could probably, if they work their way right, find somewhere to get boots on the ground, to get yes. started, to get the journey rolling with you guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good, Absolutely. good. Well, I, I know as an employer in, in, in real estate, you know, you, you look for those people that, you know, will have mm -hmm. agents that come in and maybe they're not all the way there yet, mm -hmm. but they are showing incredible drive, incredible motivation, and yeah. you want to help those people and find a way to yes. put them in. So I'm glad you guys are doing that. And we love new grads. So they just finished nursing school, they just finished PT or OT school, and they're you know taking their boards exams, getting all that wrapped up. We really love cultivating new new grads, 
starting their careers, mentoring them on site. Um, we have a, a great staff already, um, and they are really invested in helping build up their professions. Outstanding. Well, I do, I can personally speak for you guys. You do a great job over there. Everybody, every time we've walked in, we film, we've done anything, everybody has huge smiles on their faces. <laughs> Everybody's super helpful. Yes. And the patients were happy. That was a yes. big deal, too, yes. that we noticed that you didn't see a bunch of ticked off people walking around throwing <laughs> stuff. Like, they were genuinely grateful for the care. They were grateful for the care providers. And, and even though people were rehabbing and trying to get back to positive things in their life, they were in a positive environment. And so I, I can't uplift you guys enough for that. Is there anything I'm forgetting to tell everybody? I don't think so. We, we need you, Victoria. We really do. Um, we are constantly looking for professionals to join our team. And for those individuals that are really there to care for the patients and not just to make a paycheck, right? Well, and Invest to try to improve our, our health care yeah. right here in Victoria to Absolutely. keep us from having to drive to the bigger cities, Absolutely. cultivating that right here in our town. And so, ladies, thank you so much. Yes. I appreciate your hard work. Um, unless I forgot something, we will take a quick break and be right back with the next guest. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, we are back with our next guest, and I'm excited because this place was right in my backyard, and I lived literally right behind them for years and years and years, and I didn't walk over there and check it out until not so recently, and or somewhat recently, and it was awesome, and I was wrong, and I should have been over there way longer, but without further ado, young lady, tell them who you are here with and what your name is, if you don't mind. Sure. I'm Heather Parra. I am the Exhibits and Collections Manager at the Museum of the Coastal Bend at Victoria College. And again, we are very blessed to have that museum right here in our local community. For somebody like me that was slow and they hadn't gotten over there yet, what is special about that museum? Why are we so blessed to have it and why do they need to get over and check it out? Well, Victoria is situated in a place where we have just a wealth of history. We've got 13,000 plus years of human occupation of this area. And the museum has over 30,000 artifacts representative of that 13,000 plus years of occupation. And we tell that story starting, you know, in the Paleo period with the, with the woolly mammoths. Well, we didn't have woolly mammoths. We had Columbian mammoths, but with the big elephanty things. Mammoth and, and mammoth. Yes, ma'am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, um, and we go all the way up through Native American history, um, French, Spanish colonial, and um, we're about to open a new ranching exhibit next year. So we're covering the whole thing. And it's like you said, a lot of that history is right here in our area, and it's rich and it's immersive, and there's a ton of it. And what I was just blown away by is you kind of get to be a part of that when you go in there. You know, you one, it's a real museum. This isn't somebody's little back room. I got a few artifacts I threw in here, come check it out. This is a real legit museum. But you also get to go hands-on with some of the stuff that's set up because you guys want us interactive, you want us to learn. And so I did. it wasn't one of those things where I was bored walking through there. I was like a little kid, and I was super excited. And wow, and I read everything, and it was it was fascinating. And so this some of the things that I saw in there were similar to some of the things you brought today. Would you mind telling me what artifacts and what you've got out here on the table for us? Sure. Um, well, um, it's... This is all representative of this exhibit that's opening on the 15th. And um, we've got this. You know what? Let's start there. Then. Okay. If that's the case. <laughs> uh, you've made a good point. So we'll flip it back around. This exhibit coming up this Saturday. Tell me about it. Right. So um, we are opening an exhibit of a singular artifact, a unique item. Um, and it's, it's a Clovis point made out of mammoth ivory. And I know that doesn't mean anything to you, but it's very, very exciting. Um, Clovis points, which look a lot like this, um, one big flute up the middle. Um, and these artifacts are really, really rare. Uh, these were made about 13,000 years ago for a small span of time, five to 700 years only. They were made all over the continent, and then they weren't. And it's the only time we have one artifact that was made universally for a very short period of time, solely for the purpose of hunting mammoths. So what we've got is this Clovis point made out of mammoth tusk 
which is the prey that they were hunting. Mm -hmm. um, and mammoth ivory is best worked when it's green, when it's fresh off the dead mammoth. If you find like a you know rusty old dead mammoth lying not in your backyard a you. long time after, it's not going to work the same. And this is actually a piece of mammoth tusk, and you can see where it you know it it goes in layers. Ah. So the way mammoth tusk and elephant tusk as well, all of the big elephanty things, the way they grow is that they, they add a layer. And so it comes in from the middle. So the outside is going to be the oldest part, and the inside will be the newest part, and it just grows and expands. So this is what they were working with, and they napped it like they did oh. stone to make these guys. And, and forgive my did, did is that, you know, did they just chip that out, or did it just be happening, like, does this go like this? Nope. Uh, how that worked? Nope. I had nope. that all wrong, huh? All wrong. Oh. So um, <laughs> This is why I bring you in <laughs> instead of me showing this stuff. So this is a stone point, and this was napped. So you can see where somebody took probably a larger stone or maybe a piece of antler and worked it. They, they took off little flakes on the side, and then they flipped it over and did the same thing. So bifacially yes. worked. These were made the same way, and this is difficult because of the structure. These layers made, made it extra difficult. So really a rare thing. I don't know that one of these has ever been found anywhere else. It was found here in Texas. Incredible. This is not the actual thing. This is a replica because Clovis points are super rare, and I'm not bringing one you're not out of the museum. I, you, you're <laughs> smart. They, they would have told you, don't let Caleb touch it. You know, and it, may I just, I just yes, want to get a feel? And this, this one's real. This right? is real. Golly, and that was just one tusk, huh? This is a small fragment of one tusk. One tusk would fill, you know, this entire room from end to end. Holy smokes. So, I mean, these were animals that were 13 to 18 feet tall. So they yeah. had two of these big tusks that took up a lot of space. And this is just a small little fragment. And it's heavy because it's, it's old. It's fossilized. So it started to turn almost to stone. Can you um, imagine going, having to go out and hunt something that ginormous? Well, that wasn't a singular activity. You didn't go all by yourself. I mean, this, the was, whole tribe, this, was, a the... group, this was a group activity. Frequently, small nomadic groups would come together and work on this simultaneously. Gotcha. And um, some of this, real quick? This. Okay. So what they did with these things is they hafted them to what is called a foreshaft. This is the front end of a spear. This is the other part of the spear. And so this would fit into a slot at the top. The idea being if this went into a mammoth, they didn't lose the whole spear. They, ah, they lost they this. Lost a bit, yeah. These take a long time because they had to straighten them, they had to clean all the stuff off of them, they had to do all the things. So you don't want to lose all of that work. If you lose this much work, you know, it's a bummer, but it's not that big of a bummer. And these are atlatls. This is, this is the tool. This, mm -hmm. this is the thing that you fire your spear with. So this made, it was an equalizer. Women, small children, they all could hunt just as well as men. This added an extra elbow. It's a, it's a, it's a lever. It's I was a simple not very machine. good at that thing. Nobody's very good at it if you don't I do it every I was, day. They would have starved if I was back in the day because I, I was terrible at Well, you thing. can come practice. You can do this anytime <laughs> we're open. You can come and throw spears. Well, I need to practice, so I might have to take you up on that because right. I was pretty bad. But it was neat. The the It was really neat how it worked. I just was terrible at it. <laughs> it's so, okay. Most people are. But yes, ma'am. Anyway, so this is all sort of the way it works. You can think about this as like a bullet. I didn't you know, know that. You loaded so into the that, thing. That's yeah, I had no idea that they were that advanced on some of their their line of thinking on the way they, yeah, it's it's innovative and outstanding. I this is cool, and so these things I think check check out this Saturday at Ancient Ivory from one to three. It's the Museum of the Coastal Bend, mm -hmm. right there at Victoria College. Yes, um, they can look on your Facebook page and find it. Absolutely. Um, if I can't make this, but I want to support you guys or or be a part of it, what is the best way to just be a supporter of you guys and make sure that I support your mission and what you're doing? Um, well, our website, museumofthecoastalbend.org, is a great place to get all the information. There's contact info. There's membership info. Becoming a member of the museum is a huge help. Okay. Um, we do not charge a standard admission. It's pay what you want. So you can come in. If you're a little thin in the pocket that week, you can just come in and look around, and it's not going to charge You'd you anything. You'd rather have us there than not have exactly. us there. Exactly. Yes, just, just come in and enjoy our history. Um, so this will open on the 15th, but it will remain on exhibit for the foreseeable future. The foreseeable future. So, so no excuse not to get over and check yeah. it out. And there will be some, some, some events um, during the opening. Well, so. we're going to have you back on because I know in the future you guys have lots of things going on and we want to support it and we want to be a part of it. Thank you for having this, bringing this. It's really cool what you guys do and it's really cool that it's right in our backyard and mm -hmm. people need to go check it out. Guys, it's pay what you want. It's free. 
if you can't afford anything, you don't want to miss this opportunity. It's great. We need to support stuff like this in our backyard because we're very blessed to have it. And a lot of hard work goes into setting this up and getting it ready for us to see. Young lady, did I forget anything? I think you got it all. Well, thank you so much for coming. Guys, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back with the next guest. We cover about a 100 mile radius around Victoria, but if your job is big enough, we'll travel further. We're a turnkey solution for, for whatever your demolition needs are. We'll, we'll get the permits, we'll do the demo, we'll do the cleanup, and we'll do the final grading on your property. We do full scale demolition, whether it's a commercial building or a chicken coop. Outside of demolition, we also do interior or selective demolition. If you have something you want us to take a look at, give us a call, quotes are free. guys we are back i've been a fan of this guy for a while um he's violent in a good way when he needs to be he's nice otherwise but he's an exceptional young man and he's fighting a lot of grown big men and he is winning and he is doing a phenomenal job and i'm a fan of his but before we go any further young man if you wouldn't mind introduce yourself and tell him who you are here with i am dylan aguilar um eight 19 years old i've been fighting for about 10 years and man, it's just fun doing this, it really is. I love doing this every single day, waking up, you know, training, going to work, training after work, so, you know, I really like this. Well, I, you know, I, I, I get the training part, but what made you decide, you know, I think I wanna get punched in the face every day for, for my career. This, this is, punching in the face sounds fun. Why, what made you, like, how did that start? I, I know it's, fighting's kind of in your family's DNA, you know, I, your brothers, your dad, you know, I know everybody's in it, but kind of tell me the story a little bit about you guys. Okay, um, so my dad, uh, he's my stepdad, but I treat him like he's my real father. He came into my life when I was eight years old, and uh, he started showing me jiu-jitsu, and I really didn't get into MMA, and I was like, okay, I like this. You know, jiu-jitsu's pretty cool. I get to choke people out, you mm -hmm. know, I'm a little kid, and I've always gotten bullied, so, like, that was like, it boosted my confidence a little bit. And so we started training and I've always kind of had in the back of my mind when I was little, like I wanted to be like Rocky, mm -hmm. you know, he was just like my little idol, you know? So I was like, I want to fight, I want to do that. But I was a little kid, a little scared, but he came into my life, trained me. And, you know, later down the road, I started building this confidence. And I'm like, yeah, I really want to do this. I, I, I started thinking about if this is the really career path that I wanted to choose because if you do this, you got to put like 100%, 200% into it. There's no you doubt in fighting. it. You do, yeah, there is no playing around in this sport. You got to do it. It's a man's sport. It really mm -hmm. is. It's a man's sport. So if you're a kid like me who's coming in at this young of an age, starting at 17, debuting, you really got to make sure this is what you want and you got to take this serious because there's grown men in this cage who are coming at you for your head and they mm -hmm. don't care if you're a kid. And, and speaking of, of, of heads, you're, I saw several fights back and you could probably tell me, you threw a head kick on a guy and I swear you put his head in like the fourth row. Like I, I was watching that fight <laughs> and you threw this head kick and it was game over. And it, it, was, a, it was one of those like, ooh, yeah. like, you know, and I, I think I messaged the Monster Dead page and it was like, that head kick or something. Like, it, it, was, it was pretty spectacular. Do moments like that, you know, I, what fight was that for you? Do you know which one I'm talking about when you head kicked that guy? It, it was my second fight. I had just lost my first fight. And uh, my first fight, it really opened my eyes. So I trained even harder, way harder my first fight. And that second fight, I was really looking to show people that that was just a fluke. That wasn't me, you know, here's the real deal. And I showed the people that that was a real deal. I had one second on the clock, knocked him out. He was lights out, you know. Yeah, man, and you had people like me, like, yelling at the TV. Like, it was, it was cool, and, it, you know, and what's neat about that story to me is, is you were coming off a loss, and, and especially your first fight, you know, and a, and a lot of people would take that as, you know, defeat and, and let that control them instead of letting it be fuel for the fire like you did to motivate them even better for the next one and to come out stronger, better, faster, all those kind of things. And so I commend you for, for using that as a positive instead of letting it own you. You have a fight coming up this Friday, though. That yes, you, which, what number of fight is this going to be for you? This one's going to be my eighth fight. Good Lord. It, 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 what are you, 18? 19? 19. 19. Jeez. Yeah, just it's, turned. And so that is this Friday, Tapper Scrap Sick. Uh, six. Peter was going to be here. He wasn't able to make it. He got sick. I hope you feel better, Peter. 
Um, tell me about this. Who are you fighting? What do you think? You know, what do you, how's it going to go? Um, it's uh, I'm fighting Luis Rodriguez. Um, he's like more of a, a ground guy, grappler, wrestling type of background. Um, he got some good, decent strikes. I don't really like look at my opponent that much and watch them. I watch and see how they fight, get their like timing down, kind of see a little bit like what they throw and like when they shoot in or just little details, but I don't really like go into it and break it down. I let my coach do that. I do more of get my cardio trained, make sure I'm good, make sure I'm good all around. If he has anything to add to my game, oh, he does this, you know, he takes down. After throwing this combo, you need to be, be aware, yeah, mm -hmm. and prepare that for that combo and then be ready for that he's going to shoot on you. So there's just little stuff like that. I, I really don't, like, watch the fighters because I don't care. I mean, You're going to do you. Is, yeah, at yeah, the end absolutely. of the day, I train to do what I need to do, and I'm going to execute it. And I really believe in my style and my fighting that it doesn't matter what you got game plan. My, my plan is better. Yeah, I like it. And, and again, I want to touch on one thing you, you said, you know, he was your stepdad. I think that's really cool, too, because I have a stepdad that chose to be my dad, and he didn't have to be, and it was a blessing. And, and that, I don't know, sometimes that love just means as much, if not even more, because no, they chose does. to when they didn't have to. And, you know, so I feel that bond, because I've got a stepdad like that that I, I just love to death. And so, um, you know, one, congrats on that. Two, I know this is kind of a family thing. And, and, you know, your dad has fought, you have fought, your brother has fought. Are you guys just going to keep doing this into the foreseeable future? Yeah, um, my dad's fought, my mom also yeah, fought. That's right. Yeah. That, I was, there's a picture of your dad carried your mom after her victory <laughs> and me yelling right next to him. And the, I, I need to send you that picture. Yes, I've been a fan of you guys for a long time, you yeah. know. And, and so I guess y'all just going to keep on going, huh? Yeah, uh, my brother, I mean, he's 15, 16 years old. He's like 6'3", almost, like... Yeah, this, and he's coming up, and he gives me, like, when I get tired and I get my workout, I like to spar him at the end because he's always fresh. He got that Don't young body, you. yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's going to push. Like, he has no cardio where he can stop. He's like, it's like how I was when I was young. Just keep training, keep going, so. Well, good, because us old guys, we are not like that. <laughs> and, and you guys catch up with us real fast, and you wear us out. Um, how can they follow? i got to wrap this up. I could talk all day with you. If they want to follow you, if they want to come out and train with you, if they want to do those things, what's the best way to, to check you out and, and keep up with what you're doing? If you want to come check us out, um, come check us out on Facebook, Monsters Den Martial Arts. You can check that out. There's a website where you'll be able to text, phone call, uh, call the Facebook message. page, yep. too. Yep. And my Instagram handle is going to be La Muerte MMA. And you can see all my fights. I have videos of edits that are pretty cool, that are knockout edits or punching people in the face. So you can follow me. And the reason why you should come to our gym, it's not only a hardcore gym where, you know, we're all guys trying to help each other out, but we're also a family. So, like, yeah, we do argue with each other and get heated. People will go and, like, oh, I'll leave this gym. That's not how we are. We fight. If we're a family, we're going to beef it out. Settle it at the mm -hmm. end of the day. We're going to be laughing and giggles and training like how we always do, you know. There shouldn't be no arguing and just leaving a gym like it shouldn't, you know. This is a family thing, mm -hmm. and we're all here trying to grow it, like, together. And there's no reason why we should all be separated in this town with the gyms. We should be able to cross-train us. I could not agree more. I, I like seeing that. And, and, you know, and, and the last thing I'll say is people, I know it's an intimidating thing to walk into a fighting gym with a bunch of people throwing punches, choking each other, trying to break arms. It looks real scary yeah, from the outside if you've never done it. But I will argue that any MMA, MMA, any MMA gym, jiu-jitsu gym, whatever, is some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And it iron sharpens iron, and they want you to be better. And just walking in that first day is the hardest day. The cardio yeah. sucks. Everything sucks. But it's actually fun once you get in the door. And so um, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate all you get, what you guys do in the community. Tapper Scrap this Friday. Check him out. Uh, hope you bring home the victory, my friend. I have, I'll, I'll be cheering for you. Uh, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back with our last, right back with our last guest. There we go. Since 1932, Walk and Volk has been closing mortgages and doing it the right way. The reason why the Volks opened up a bank um, at the height of the Great Depression was because the bank needed to be opened at the height of the Great Depression. And it was good for the community at that time. A lot of the banks were going under. In order to keep that community sound and stable, it was something that they did. I think that that says something about who Wallach and Volk was 85 years ago. 
And the only way you get to continue to do it is if you consistently do it great. And we plan on doing this for another 85 years. All right, guys, we are back. We're excited for this next guest. He was supposed to join us a long time ago. One minute, it wasn't able to make it, but he's here now. So without further ado, my brother, please introduce yourself and let him know who you are here with. Uh, my name is Danny Camacho. I'm with the uh, Victoria Bad News Chairs. Uh, we're an adaptive sports team uh, out here, a nonprofit organization out of Victoria, Texas. Uh, we pretty much uh, do adaptive sports, which is uh, wheelchair sports. A lot of people get that kind of uh, mixed up, uh, adaptive sports. Now, what is that? It's basically wheelchair sports, uh, wheelchair football, basketball, uh, softball, uh, soccer. You name it, we do it. We've done it. Uh, but that's what the organization is. Uh, I started back in 2015. Um, and this would be our sixth year that we're doing our uh, softball tournament. And uh, uh, we, we had to stop like, two years because of COVID, uh, unfortunately. But we're back at it again last year, and this is our uh, second year since COVID. So this is our sixth year, yeah. And uh, it's, it's uh, pretty exciting because uh, it's our first time we're having an out-of-state team come uh, from Tulsa. So that's uh, really going to be putting uh, Victoria on the map uh, as far as... Uh, National wheelchair softball, uh, you know, goes. Uh, so uh, that's a pretty big deal for me uh, uh, personally. But uh, but yeah, man. Uh, uh, Victoria Bad News Chairs. Uh, a lot of people don't know. Again, uh, we do all kinds of sports and, uh, and recreational activities. Uh, we try to help in the community. Try to get awareness out, uh, inclusion. We know get everyone in, uh, involved. Uh, you know, wheelchair or not, uh, come and sit in the chair if you want. One day of practice. We practice on Wednesdays from 68 at the CADC field on Vine Street. Uh, 3105 North Vine Street. Um, we are on Wednesdays, and uh, the tournament is July 15th and 16th. Um, yeah, well, another week or two. Um, opening ceremonies. July eight. 15th, man. That's this Saturday and Sunday. We're yeah. getting after it. Yeah, yeah. that's coming yes. right up this weekend. It snuck right up on us. Yes, sir. It sure did. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm really excited about it. Well, you should be, man. This is this is a big deal that you guys are putting on together and 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 making happen. So you you should be proud of it couple questions. Let's start, if I'm a, an athlete and I want to participate and I just moved to Victoria, I didn't know that adaptive sports were here, right up my alley. How could they, they just reach out and say, you know? Yeah, you that's know, what we're looking for. Uh, we're, you know, we're always encouraged the community, especially the adaptive disabled community to come out uh, and, and uh, just see what the Bad News Charities is about and uh, you know, participate either one if you want to try to play in. And if that's not your thing, you just want to just be supportive, you know, be a cheerleader on the sideline. Uh, bad news, you know, we'll, get you, we'll get you a shirt, uh, no bad news chairs for life, uh, uh, support us. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, especially if you're, again, if you're new to the city, you're, you're, you're into adaptive sports, uh, yeah, definitely give us a call. Uh, Facebook, uh, adapt, uh, is, uh, Victoria Bad News Chairs Adaptive Sports Team on Facebook. Uh, bad News Chairs uh, dot, uh, at gmail.com is our um, email. And uh, 361-722-9569 is the contact number, which will be me. But yeah, give me a call, and uh, we'll be more than happy to get you in a chair. And uh, and, and our, at our tournament uh, on Sunday, we're having our uh, first annual O.J. Johnson Memorial uh, Exposition Game. Um, and uh, we're getting the PTA program from Victoria College to come, and we're going to play against other athletes and, and chairs. So it's going to know this kind of awareness thing. Uh, but yeah, so if, if you want to play on that day on Sunday, uh, you, you know, in the community, uh, you're more than welcome to come out. Again, we're in, uh, it's inclusion. Uh, we'll put you in the chair, and uh, you can come and play on Sunday morning. Well, at 9 several o'clock. of you guys have been for a couple of years calling me and like, come out here, Caleb. Like, and I want to stress, you guys are athletes, and, oh, yeah. and you're not playing out there. Like, they're trying to get me to come out there, and they're like, Caleb, we'll put you in the chair. And I know you guys are all going to beat up on me, because <laughs> I, I can see the fault. And like, everybody like, bring him, bring him, you know. And, but when I watch you guys, you guys go at it. Like, oh, yeah. They, 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 this isn't something soft week. No. In fact, it was a little nerve-wracking because you guys go at it, you know. And so well, it, it was cool to see. We go like, at it so much that uh, you know, last year, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it because I broke both of my legs uh, playing wheelchair softball in a tournament in Houston. So, uh, yeah, so we, we go at it, you know. <laughs> I mean, this is full contact, uh, competitive, uh, you know, uh, trash talking, uh, you name it, you know, any you know, it's sports. It's a sport, you know. Sports. Uh, and of course, after the game, you know, we're all friends, you know. We absolutely. All, but but yeah, you no, know, it's competitive though. We you know we practice. We we try to win. That's our goal. Uh, but yeah, you know. But then again, there's also the rec part, you know, the recreational the, the part, you know, where you can just go out and have fun, bowling, 
fishing, uh, uh, and all types of recreational activities. Uh, there's a big fishing tournament we do also every year. So, so yeah. So I mean, Bad News Chairs is you know we're basically out here to you know for the, in the community, adapted to stable community, and everybody just to come and get involved and uh, you know find out what's what we're about and uh, the stuff we do with adaptive sports and, and uh, recreational activities. And, and also, again, uh, no, we, we do a lot of speaking for uh, different organizations to you know, uh, motivational speaking, encouragement, stuff like that. You know, just you know, kind of start from the bottom, you know, here we are now. Uh, uh, so, yeah, man. So, again, I encourage you, uh, the whole community to come out on that weekend, July 15th and 16th. And uh, don't be a water slide. So, for the adults to come out, have some fun. There'll be a concession stand. Uh, be plenty of shade. Uh, Good. Yeah. Good. So, and that'll be at the CADC field at 3105 Vine Street. Um, air, opening ceremonies are at 845. Again, that is this Saturday, July 15th. Um, brother, am I forgetting anything? No, that's pretty much it. Again, I encourage everyone to come out. Uh, we will have uh, T-shirts for sale uh, so you can support us that way. You know, um, But, yeah, come out and, and uh, support Victoria Bad News Chairs. Uh, we're expecting a big crowd you know, for, to support Victoria especially against this out-of-state team, you know, coming from Tulsa. You know, represent uh, us. We want to represent, represent you yes, know, sir. and, and uh, put Victoria on the map. So, uh, yeah, so, Good again. Deal, uh, brother, we appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Thanks for doing it big, and, and uh, we support you, and make sure you keep us in the loop and, and come on in the future and tell us about what you got going. Guys, it's Chopping Black Time, middle of the week. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back. We have missed you, my friend. It's just not the same up here without you. We... we not the same, and you were missed. And so thank you for coming back. Thank you for bringing another middle of the week, the chopping block. Before I go any further, the chopping block food truck and catering is now open noon until sell out. Is that right? 11 now. 11, Worked our man. way up to all 11. Right, all right, that means you're just gonna sell out even sooner. So get up there get quickly, because it goes fast. But anyway, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. What do we got here today, my friend? Man, so we got a new new guy in the shop, and he's got some awesome new recipes. So we're starting to be able to do things that we've never done before. Because I'm not really a chicken salad fan, potato salad, pasta salad. So we got a new guy in the store, Josh. He's really killing it with some of this new stuff. So brought you some of our chicken salad. Um, not really my favorite thing in the world to eat, but a lot of our customers. I think this it's, we we put out 25 at a time, and they're going in less than an hour. You know, I'll tell you, I'm with you. Like. The salad thing, like, I'm thinking of lettuce salad. Like, that's the kind of salad I eat. This is not the type of salad I eat. But that said, I'm going to go ahead and grab this because my wife keeps telling me how wrong I am for not doing this stuff. And I almost look like a TV bite I caught you with right there. It's fine. No, not my thing, but it's still good. Like, I get why people like it. Not as different as I thought my it was wife, but Yeah, it... It actually tasted better. Caught me off guard. I was expecting to have to fake it. And it was actually kind of good. And then I didn't know what to say. So that's CD, guys. I didn't think I was going to like it. I did like it. The chopping block. The chopping block food truck. Now open at 11. What else? We were both pleasantly surprised. I know. Good stuff. Check it out. New at the chopping block. We'll see you next week, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to Victoria Events with Caleb Shaw. Make sure you comment down below, like the post, share the post. It really helps the algorithm. If you haven't done so already, make sure you follow our page. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any episodes. And if you have an event coming on you want featured on Victoria Events, shoot us a message. We'd love to help you get the word out there. Lastly, make sure you support our sponsors. We could not do this show without them, so we're very grateful. Thanks so much, Victoria, and we'll see you at the next one.